the Holy Ghost is in charge. Let him have his way inside of you. Amen. 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 Oh, um, we do have room up on uh, the second row, so y'all don't have to be so tight back there. Y'all can come on up. We're family. We love you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to have a presentation from the youth. Amen. 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 Um, we've been practicing this with Brother RJ and Brother Jason, amen, so y'all work with us on this one. This one is gone.
They're praying for your children when you're not even covering your children. Man, oh, it's getting kind of quiet in here. I know I'm telling the truth. Amen. So this morning, amen, what we want to do is that we want to get a nice gift. Get a nice gift. Amen. The Bible says none went before the Lord empty. You don't go before the Lord empty. You have something in your hand. Amen. Praise God. And I'm a firm believer that if you sow into this man of God and this woman of God, God will bless you. Tremendously. Do you believe that? Amen. The Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? The word of God. The only way you're going to get faith is through the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I want everybody, amen, to take this time to get something in your hand. I want you to, praise God, get an offering in your hand. If you've been given five, amen, come on, stretch it out. Stretch your faith out and give a 20. Praise God. Switch, stretch your faith out and give a 40. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We're not a money church, but this is a sowing. You sow, you reap. Amen? That's, right. That's what it's all about. Praise God. Praise God. We don't have no problem giving to the IRS. Amen? No. They're going to get theirs. You ain't got no choice. Right? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I want everybody to stand. Praise God at this time. Praise God at this time of giving. And I want you to know, just as a side note, that giving is not something that you just get in and get it out of the way. Giving, giving an offering is a type of worship. It's a worship. It's part of worship. Amen? The greater the sacrifice, the greater the blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, Greater the sacrifice, greater the blessing. Look at somebody else. Look at somebody else and say, Greater the sacrifice, greater the blessing. One thing about a sacrifice is not a sacrifice until you feel it hurt. Praise God. Amen. That's what happened with Jesus. Amen. He felt it hurt, right? He felt that sacrifice, amen. And also, I just want to let you know that we also have the spike. Okay, amen. Praise God. So if you have a debit card or a credit card, you can just kindly just step over to the left of me and uh, she'll give you the spike. So just come on and pray. Let's go ahead and have prayer real quick. Let's have prayer. Let's cover this with prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for this time of giving, O oh God. Lord, I thank you, O oh God, that you may put, uh, praise God, that you may rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, we claim this year, 2015, is the day of increase. Because this year is a year of increase, O oh God. Supernatural blessings, O oh God. Father God, doors being open, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, divine favor, O oh God. Restoration, O oh God. A family, O oh God. A friends, O oh God. A broken relationship, O oh God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you for making a way out of nowhere, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you don't have anything. You made it possible. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. Lord, take out a way maker, but you're a way made, O oh God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for this blessing, oh God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, whatever we give, oh God, oh God, let it be out of, oh God, I praise God, not out of gratitude, oh God, not out of, hallelujah, not because I'm angry, oh God, but Lord, because I'm a cheerful giver. Lord, help us to give cheerfully in the name of Jesus, oh God. And everyone that walks this, uh, praise God, walks to this table, oh God, to give their offering, oh God. Lord, let increase relief, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we give your name of praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, we can put the offering in the rest of the cup.
feet to receive the apostle and the pastor and the
God see their will as they were before. Answer questions, bring healing and deliverance. Set the captive free today by your word. In the name of Jesus. Work miracles by your word. Father, move us out the way that your glory may shine forth. We sit down that you may stand up in us. Let your word go forth and touch the hearts of the people that need to be touched today. And God, we make this promise that we will not take the glory unto ourselves. But we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name. If you believe that prayer, put your hand together as the God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And I just praise God for all of you, God's people. Amen. Welcome to True Vine Ministry. And I know it's a little warm today because it's getting warm outside. And some people know how to be thankful. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I remember when it was cold. Amen. It wasn't that long ago. Just yesterday. It wasn't that long ago. So we praise God. Amen for the need. But on this Resurrection Sunday, we come to be a blessing to you on today. Amen. How many of you know Jesus is alive? Amen. I'm going to ask that you turn the Bibles to Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke, the 24th chapter. We're going to talk to you today about the power of the resurrection. The power of the resurrection. Amen. How many you know there's power in the resurrection? Amen. 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 The Apostle Paul said that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. Amen. Many people just know Jesus, but we don't know him in the power of his resurrection. But today, we want to talk about walking in that power. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are we there yet? Yeah. Hold up. Amen. Yeah, Luke 24. Not only does it take me to know him, since y'all love him, I'm going to know, because this is the scripture we're reading, but not only are we going to know him in the power of his resurrection, but we're also going to know him through suffering. He suffered. He, 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 amen. He suffered. Why must he suffer alone? It also says we shall know him, uh, you know, through our sufferings as well. But the sufferings of this present world are not worthy ah, oh my God to be compared yeah. oh, yeah. to the things that are yet going to be revealed That's in right. us. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get excited. I get excited because we get to thinking about our sufferings and the things that we're going through. But as we talked about in Sunday school, our sufferings, are, they, they are the light affliction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when we're going through it, it don't seem so light, do it, Sam? <laughs> oh, my God. Amen. Are we there yet? <laughs> well, that's preach right here. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. And I, 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 I'm looking and I see the preachers that know, those who know the word, who can experience the word, I yes, see Lord. them rise up and preach it. It ain't your time. It ain't your time. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It says this, but those of you who got to preach a little later on, you're welcome to use it. Amen. <laughs> it's the word. The word is not trademarked. Amen. God, that's a message right there, baby. <laughs> it's free, it's free, it's free, it's free. It's a free gift. I like that, I like that. We ain't gonna see it. I know all y'all get it, but I get it. Jesus. Oh, my God. Okay, 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 calm myself down. Now, look, next time they, they, they decide they want to come to the preacher and say, you need to give us a copy of your story. There you go. Amen. 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 Amen.
Jesus.
<laughs> and then remember his words. Listen. <laughs> we come to talk to you today about the power of resurrection. Yes, but we can't talk to you about the power of resurrection until we talk to you about death. Because there's no need to be resurrected unless a death is taken. Amen. But Jesus says in the scripture, it was something that he must go through. It was something he must suffer. It was something that's supposed to happen. Yes, sir. One of the things that we fail to realize is that for God to use us, there's some things that we must endure. There's some things we must go through. There's some things we must suffer. We can't, amen, avoid it. We can't pray our way over it. We can't pray our way around it. Amen. We must go through certain stages, certain activities in our life in order to see God's power in our life. Paul, as he's saying, Amen. That I need to know him in the power of his resurrection. Paul is understanding that I have been through some stuff. He said, I've been stoned and left for dead, but he resurrected me. But I'm still, even though I've been resurrected out of that, there's still something I don't understand about resurrection. And so what I need you to understand is just because God brought you out of so much, don't mean that there might be something that God still wants you to understand about resurrection, about being risen again, about going up to another level, about reaching God in a new place. There's still some stuff that God wants to show us. And our greatest enemy is that we get to a place where we think we know. We get to a place where we say, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. I know what the word says. I know. I heard this testimony before. I know. I know. Hey, I got a book about it. I know. I got a, I got a tape. I know. I, I read Kenneth Copeland. I read Kenneth Lagan. I, I read uh, whoever. I read all the great theologians. I know. Well, baby, you don't really know until you actually been through something. And then on your own, it ain't got nothing to do with what somebody else been through and told you. It's got to be your own experience. Don't get discouraged even when you're going through right now because some of us feel like we are in the fire right now. Don't get discouraged because all that you're going through is only a stepping stone to raise you to another level. And you keep holding on to what you're going through. And, and we were talking about it this morning. That should have, could have, would have, what if. And what if this had happened or used to. This is how it used to be. But baby, you got to look at your situation and say, I am no longer there. But there are some things that have been died, that have been killed off, that have died in my life. And God has resurrected some other things in the place of it, that I don't, I don't look like what I've been through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't even look like I've been in the yeah. fire. You can't be a smell of smoke on you. You can't be a smell of smoke because God not only would be raising me up, but he cleaned me up. My God, my God. Check this out, check this out. In line what she said, I wrote this in my, my little notes. It says, the death you experience yes. or are experiencing mm -hmm. is only a sign of the power of the resurrection hey. that dwells in you. Hey. Oh, oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, hey. Can I say that one more time? Can I say that one more time? Oh, it was what the said, the death you experience mm -hmm. and are experiencing is only a sign of the power of the resurrection that is dwelling in you. Jesus! Yes, sir, I hear you. I if y'all know me, y'all done heard me minutes for a while, y'all know I like to go to Webster. I like to go to Webster. And I like the thing about Webster because Webster, when the first definition is how it's used the most, that's just a little nugget for some of y'all. And resurrection means the act of rising from the dead. I know some of y'all say, I know what it means. Let me read this to me anyhow, because I got the mic. The act of rising from the dead. 
The rising of the day dead on judgment day. Judgment day don't mean when Jesus comes back. It's the day that you recognize what's going on and you are raised up. And you say, don't make me preach. Don't make me preach. Come on. Glory to preach. Amen. My God. It says a rising again. The only way you can rise again is if you've ever been down. And you know, 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 And it says, Go ahead. Dry the nails in my hand. Laugh at me. What do you say? Why? Because I'm going to rise. You didn't look. I, I just, this is a pause in the lesson, but I need you to prophesy to the person next to you. Just look at him and say, Guess what? You're going to rise again. You're going to rise again. Come on, baby. You got to have a not right now. is time Can I say, yeah, 
But God, that's what I said. Cause it, 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 yeah, amen. Not only forget, but it blinds you. You know how they say love is blind. Well, well, that's not, it's just that. You call it what you want. Because uh, if somebody is beating on you and you feel like you love them so much, then you're just dead. So what you do is you go out and look for somebody else. Yes. And they'll have the same characteristics, but you'll overlook those characteristics till after you've been with them for about six months to a year and they start beating on you again. Y'all quiet now. Y'all quiet now. We didn't hit, we didn't hit a nerve. <laughs> quiet now. So you don't realize you're dead and they just beat you to death some more. Yes, ma'am. I hear you. I hear you. See, resurrection is designed to take you to life. Yes, sir. To a better place. Not where you've been. Yes, sir. It just seemed like the stuff we used to do worked. Yes, sir. But if you tell the truth, the only reason you're here right now is because whatever you used to do didn't work. Whatever you've been a part of before didn't work. Whatever you wrapped yourself up in before didn't work. So now you decided, I'm going to choose God now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with the Lord. I'm going to do. But what you don't realize is that in order to be with the Lord, you've got to let the dead go. you got to allow him to resurrect you to do stuff. And so. So, so in the text, the Bible says only after the resurrection took place did they remember. Only after did they remember that he told them before it was going to happen. So can I tell you something? When you did, and when you really did, you don't like to hear anything about dying again. Because we have this, this idea. We have this thing going on in the Bible that for me to live, I have to die. Right? To live is to die. To, to die is to gain Christ. Is, and so we have this element of death that we don't want to look at. And that's why a lot of times when you go to church, you gravitate toward the feel good. You gravitate toward what feels good. You gravitate what will we'll, we'll soothe your itching ears. You, you gravitate. So when we start talking about blessings and when we start talking about resurrection and new houses and new cars and, and so you gravitate toward that, but you call out That's right. That's right. the idea that a death has to take place before I can bring it into life. We actually think having a car and a house and all I'm living People are killing themselves with all that. Right. 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 People that got money are killing themselves. Yes. Not that we shouldn't have, we have some balance, though. And if you don't have balance, right. you're not going to be happy. That's right. You think that's living? That's not living. Mm. I don't want to go to that little church over there. Look at the look at the parking lot. I say that sometimes myself. But uh, that's what y'all do. I'm talking about our, our church. Right. You know, we have to go through the Rocky Hills to get up in here. And, no. Want to look at other folks and be envious of what they've got, and you don't know what they've been through to get what they've yeah, Come on, yeah. Ooh, that's true. That's true. Or what kind of sin they committed to get You can know you want me, and you're willing to sell out to do it. We were watching, we finally got a chance to see God is Alive last night. God is not, God is not God dead is not last dead. night. Oh it, it was on Netflix, so we pulled it up. and uh, the one one guy, he had all this money and stuff, and he was sitting there talking to his mom who had dementia. And those of y'all who had dementia, I'm sorry. Um, I just seen him. But he was sitting there talking to his mom. And you know, if you got dementia, you just not in your right mind. And he was like, You were a good woman. You never did anything bad to anybody. You never did this. You never did that. And, and, and look at you. He said, I got all this money. I got this. I'm successful. And he said, And, and look at you. You basically tell her you ain't got nothing. And she said a statement that was so powerful oh my God. that just messed him up. Oh and then God. she looked at him and she said, who did you say you were again? Uh -huh. You know, you ain't got to be in your right mind to know God. Jesus. Jesus. Hey, that's right mind enough. Oh it was enough to shake up the very hell oh in him. Amen. And then she went back to the 
Don't even matter who you are. That's right. That's right. It's what lies in you. Yes. It's the Jesus that is in you. Yes. Woo. Jesus. Amen. So I need you to prophesy one more time to the yes. person next to you and say, you're going to rise again. You're going to rise again. Rise again. Rise again. Now, yes, sir. Rise now, again. I, I need you to get this in your own spirit. I need to get you to get this in your spirit. Y'all ready? You need to get it in your own spirit. Yes, sir. Say, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. This is how you got to start talking to the devil. Don't just sit back and take what you're going through. Amen. You got to go through it, but you got to let the devil know every day I'm coming out of this. Yes, Lord. I'm not going to be like this all the time. I'm not going to be down here all the time. There are things that things look like this all the time. I'm coming out. Why? Because I have resurrection power for the inside of me. Yes. 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 Let me explain. Let, let, me, let me say something to you because you need to know that you have resurrection power. Let me tell you what resurrection power is. Resurrection power is that little thing in you that when you're down somehow you can hear and you can see things better than where you are you can hear it and you can see it the, the, the disconnect is that you're not believing in yourself so you'll live and see what you you'll talk about it and you might share it with folks but you never get to it because you don't believe in yourself did you catch that? Yes. And so resurrection power is the little voice that keeps yep. causing you to see big things when you give it up. Come on. Amen. 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 Resurrection power is the little voice, is the little visions, the things that you see that are bigger than you that you've already given up on. You're not just dreaming. In the African culture, and I say that, in the African culture, uh, I am told that they believe that dreams are real. That when you dream, your spirit actually leaves your body and goes um, and involves itself in the activity of the dream. In fact, they believe that if you awaken during the time of a dream, you might die because your spirit is not in your body at the time. Think about that. Now, if that is reality, when I'm dreaming, I'm actually living in the experience of my dream. So what God will do to you sometime, y'all ready? God will put you in the new house and have you live in there <laughs> Long before you get there, just to show you, this is what I can do for you. Jesus. Uh, Amen. Uh, Amen. <laughs> let me just let me just give you a scripture. Paul said, "I was caught up into the third heaven, and I experienced some things. I, I heard some things that I can't even." Jesus. 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 You think you just? Oh, I just had a dream. I just. I was just seeing something. I, I, you know, I was running out of car and I heard this boy say, maybe you just wasn't hearing stuff. That was God talking to you. God was showing you. Amen. You might be down now, but I'll get ready to resurrect you. I'll get ready to bring you to a place that you only dream about. Let me back it down. Y'all don't want the heavy stuff. Y'all want let me back it down. Okay, maybe you just want a new house in the hood. I, maybe that's just you. I, 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 you know, I told you know I go. We went to the first time I went to Florida. Can I say the first time I went to Florida? I went to Florida with my wife and was at her mother's house, and we went to the beach. And while we were on the beach, I was looking at all these houses on the beach. Six million dollars. Seven million dollars. These houses were no bigger than the houses that you see out here. But they're on the beach. $10 million. $10 million house. I'm sitting there looking like, really? I'm looking at the house going, that's nothing to this. Y'all hear me? 
But what you're not catching, I told you, God will sometimes take you to what? So I begin to say to my wife, when I retire, yeah. when I retire, y'all, y'all, okay, y'all don't, y'all know what it's dream, y'all know. This is resurrection. Okay, I'm sorry. I, 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 let me let me just say this, because y'all y'all not getting. It. Here's what I want you to catch. Death. Some of y'all remember I preached a couple of weeks ago about how when Adam sinned, catch this, when Adam sinned, death entered into all men. Yes, sir. What does that mean? That means death, when death happens, everything dies. Say it again. When death happens, everything dies. So a dead person does not speak. A dead person does not breathe. A dead person doesn't have a functioning heart. They don't have a functioning brain. They can't walk. They can't do anything. Everything about them is dead. Watch this. So guess what? When death entered into us at the sin of Adam, everything is dead. Yes. <laughs> everything is dead. You can't even walk right. You think you're walking, but you're dead. You can't even talk right. You think you're talking, but you're dead. You can't even think right. You think you're thinking, but you're dead. Everything is dead. Jesus. Everything. Everything. And that's why nothing works out, because it's dead. That's why when we try to do stuff that work with somebody else, it never worked out. Why? Because we're living in death. In fact, your mind is focused on death. Everything that you think is going to bless you and bring you to life is really focused on death. So watch this. When Christ comes in, Christ resurrects us. Everybody remember when you first got saved? Yes, sir. You were excited about everything. Grass looked greener, sky looked bluer, all that kind of, y'all remember that stuff? Yes. And then you walked around, you was preaching to roaches and cats and dogs and stuff because you wanted to tell them about Jesus because you felt so good about how Jesus came in your life and he gave you life and you wanted to give life to everything that was moving. Are you with me? Yes. Well, what God was trying to do in that season was show you what life looked like. And remember when that time, you during that season, you forgot you were broke you forgot what you didn't have. You forgot you didn't have an education. You forgot you couldn't talk that good. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You y'all can remember it. You forgot all that stuff. You just started going after life. I gotta live. I gotta show somebody else how to live. I gotta bring somebody else into his life. Listen, listen. Listen, at that season in your life, you forgot about your bad friend. You forgot about your spouse. It was all about God. Right, 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 right. Everything you see was life. Everything you see was life, but trouble, trouble came, trouble came, trouble came, trouble came, trouble came, trouble came. And watch this. Remember what I said earlier? When I said earlier, they went into the wilderness, and what happened? They began to revert back to what used to work. And that's exactly what happens to us in our Christian walk. We get to a place that trouble comes, and we revert back. And so we start seeing death again. We do. We start seeing it again. And we start living it. And we start walking it out. We start because we're familiar with that activity. Hallelujah. And so what I, I got you. Yep. So what Christ does is that he resurrects us so that we can see life again. So that we can forget about this dead stuff. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Let me tell y'all something. Life itself living is a trap. Y'all know, even, even the world gets that. Okay. They got these movies out here. I think we were talking about in Sunday school, Night of the Living Dead or whatever. And life is attractive. Yes. It's attractive to the dead. And it's attractive to the dead because the dead are always trying to kill the living. Mm -hmm. I hear you, no, I hear you. The dead is not going after the dead. Come on, y'all don't watch some of these right. movies. No, if you're already dead, the devil's not going to mess with you. The dead ain't coming after you. The dead is coming after those that are alive. So when it sees anything alive, it's coming after you. And some of y'all know this, and you're afraid to live because you're afraid to die. Oh, my God. But in order for you to be resurrected, you 
have first got to die. While he was at the ministry, because then you know, you're preaching, you know, you hear something, you be wanting to preach it, and, and it, it's just stuff that's kind of coming to you. And as he was up there ministering, I got to thinking about someone who once had full use of all their limbs, and then maybe they become paralyzed. Or maybe they lost the limb. And I know some folks in here understand what I'm talking about right now. They say you have phantom pains, or, 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 you know, if you lost complete use of those limbs, you know that they're supposed to function as God created them. And in your mind, you're trying to make that stuff work again. In your mind, I'm saying something, you're trying to make it work again as God made it to work. And some of you are dead and you know you're supposed to be working a, a certain way. Huh? And in your mind, you see it working that way. You just can't get to that point because there's something holding you back. There's something holding you down. And, and, I, I know what I mean. Uh, yes. I hear you. Yes. You see it. You know it's supposed to be this way. But death is holding you back. But you can rise again. That's why they got physical therapy. That's why they got we got pastors, pastors that will work you out and stretch those muscles and cause them to work like they used to. Yes. So, in transitioning into our closing, here's how you get resurrected. Y'all ready? As Jesus is crucified, put to death by the corpse, he is taken from the cross and put in a tomb. They say on the third day, now let me help some of you understand, I'm going to give you a little theological information, okay? Uh, in the Jewish calendar, there are more than 50, there are actually 54 Sabbaths. All right? So, Sabbath also, it represents the number seven. So on the Jewish calendar, Sabbath is always on Saturday. But they also have the Sabbath that represents when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, which is on a different day. It's actually on a Wednesday. Are you with me? Because we always talk about Jesus being three days in the grave. So if you do it properly on the Jewish calendar, Jesus actually was crucified on Thursday, not Friday. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So I just want to help you out because some of you might get challenged with that by some other people of other religions. Why y'all say he rose on the third day if he died on Friday? No, he died on Thursday. He died on the other Sabbath, right before the other Sabbath. Right. Okay, so with that said, here's a question. He, he's, he, he's resurrected. They run to the tomb on the third day or the first day of the week, and he's not there. The angels are there, and they ask the question, why seek ye the living among the dead? Let me put it in our turn. Why are you seeking to live around dead folks? Why are you looking for life? around people that are dead. Yes. Why are you going back to something that has no life in order to get life? Why are you looking in dead places to find life? You, okay, if you're trying to get married, you don't go to a dead club to find somebody dead to marry when you want life. You don't, you got to go to where people are living in order to experience. Why are you looking to live in a dead situation? You know it's dead. You know it's killing you. You know it's taking you down, but you're trying to stay. Let me say something. And this will help you out. One of the worst things that will keep you down, and y'all better hear me when I say this, 
is bad teaching. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Bad teaching. There are so many people who have lived in misery in their lives because they were taught that if you get a divorce, you can't get married again. And they say it's in the scriptures. And it is, but not in that context. Exactly. Are y'all hearing me? Now, I'm saying this about marriage but we hold false teachings in other areas yes. as well. Yes. But I'm saying it about marriage because I want you to know how strong it is. And sometimes, here's, here's the resurrection part, sometimes God will have you to go through something to challenge your death thinking. Remember, he must go through it. Yes, must go through it. You must, some things you're going to have to go through the challenge where death is. Yes. See, in order for God to get death out of us, he has to put us in a situation where death has to be challenged. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And that's stuff that you're going through, that you've been through, that's challenging you, it was only to challenge you. You cannot go back to it. It won't be the same. It won't be the same if you go back to it. Since he was talking about marriage, let me use a relationship. Because I, you know, I've had many girlfriends and dated a whole lot of people. Once I dated you, I'm not going back to you. Obviously, you were not the one. And then you go back to the same moment. Why well, go back? That's like a dog returning to his bottle. Mm. Jesus. Mm. It was killing you then. Yes. I need to hear that. Could you? Wait. Let me. So, in order to be resurrected, you've got to remember that God has to put you in a dead situation so that yes. your, your thinking can change. Yes. And some of us have some messed up thinking. Jesus. And if you don't believe it, just look at where you are. Mm. I ain't talking about nobody I'm trying to be. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be real because I can't help you unless you look at yourself. Jesus. We talked about that in Sunday school this morning. It's a personal thing. Mm. You are where you are because of decisions that you made, Amen. and those decisions were probably made from a standpoint hey, of I'm death. Up. And so God allows you to go ahead and make the decision and do what you did and get in the situation that you were in so that you can be challenged how to get out and what to do when you get out. Are you with me? And so look, God's trying to bring you into the promised land, but you can't get in the promised land until you let go. And then I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to submit to you today that some of you are getting ready to go through a Red Sea experience. And what do I mean by Red Sea experience? God is getting ready to take you to a place where you can't go back. Somebody need to hear me. God is getting ready to take somebody. I prophesied to somebody right now. God is about to take you over to a place where you can't go back. Where you won't be able to go back to what you used to. And, 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 and let me tell you something. Don't get angry. Don't get mad. You, got, you might not remember this until later on when I said it today. You might not remember, but later on, but you might have to cry, you might have to go through, you might have to hurt, but I'm guaranteeing that God is taking you to a better place. He got to get you away from your own place to get you to it. I'm telling you, it ain't easy crossing the Red Sea. It ain't easy going through, amen. Oh my. It ain't easy having folks chasing you. How are you You know, sometimes when God is trying to take you to the new place, he got folks on your back that are chasing you, reminding you you used to hang out with me. You used to work with me. We used to go out together. We used to do something and love you on your tail. But God said, I'm getting ready to send something to drown them all. You ain't going back. Somebody say, I ain't going back. Oh, I'm going back here. No, I'm getting ready to mess up. He's getting ready to mess it up. He's getting ready to mess it up. Why? Because this time he's going to live. 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 He's
the, here's the end of the story, because I'm testifying. Here's the end of the story. We've been married 21 and a half years. Yes, right. Me and Paul. Amen. <laughs> Long time mm -hmm. But in the first years, first two years of my marriage, I thought I was dreaming. <laughs> Did you hear me? The first two years of our marriage, I thought I was dreaming. Why? Because nobody ever loved me like this before. I never experienced somebody caring about what I wanted. I never experienced about somebody looking at me like I was the best person in the world. I never, y'all, okay, y'all, y'all not, y'all not catching this, y'all, 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 uh, See, we will settle for mess. We will settle for folks that we can please that don't really want to please us. Huh? Hey, I'm trying to testify. I'm trying to testify. I'm trying to help you out. I'm talking about resurrection. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy. So what happens is, what happens is when God brings you into your promised land, he will make you forget about the pain that you went through to get there. In other words, there are times that I'm living and the enemy tries to remind me of where I've been, but it don't even mean nothing anymore because what I'm experiencing now is so much greater than the pain that I... Jesus. Jesus. Yes, sir. I, uh, yes, sir. See, when God resurrects you, he's bringing you to a place that caused you to forget about that place back there. And this is, let me tell you something. This is the Sunday, and really it's every day. Y'all got to forgive me. I'm not a holiday person. And the reason why I'm not a holiday person because I think every day is a holiday. Amen. Every day I wake up, new mercies are presented to me. Therefore, I am just as excited today as I was on yesterday as the day before God. New mercy. Don't have to be Easter. It can be just... But for some of you traditional folks, this day represents the day that one man's actions disqualify the actions of another man. This day marks the day, amen, that one man's death caused all of us to die, but now one man's death causes all of us to live. All of us to see our future. All of us to see something great. promises in my life. And I thank God. Let, let, I'm, I'm going to say this. And I'm talking about today. I thank God that I, he didn't allow me to keep living in my death experience. Let me talk to some people who had a lot of people break promises in their life. Broken promises will cause you to live in death. Jesus. You have people promise you stuff and they don't come through. That'll make you live in death. Because you got your hope in man rather than in God. Amen. But I need to talk to you because God never intends for you to live in death. In fact, whenever somebody promises you something, you got you to gotta start looking at it as though it's coming from God, not from them. Therefore, if they don't live to carry out the promise, God will send somebody else to fulfill it. But can I tell you something? If you're so hurt that you say, I ain't listening to that, guess what? You disqualify the whole problem. Jesus. This is spiritual. I know you didn't catch it, but nobody responded. Let me say it again. Let me make it real plain so you can get it. If I come to you and I say, God told me to give you a thousand dollars. Right? Now, if you believe in me, I could leave here and die tomorrow. Worth a thousand dollars. Right? But if you believe God, you can say, look, God, you would not have sent nobody to me to give me a promise 
unless you want to give me something. Mm -hmm. So I don't care where it comes from, I'm believing in my thousand dollars. I'm not waiting on Pastor Brown to bring it. I'm waiting on it to come because you said it. I, I wasn't able to hear it at a time. It came at a time I wasn't expecting. It came at a time that I was in need and God sent me a word to encourage. The, the, the word of prophecy is to encourage, is to and give you comfort, is to exalt you, exalt you. Why? Because you're in a bad place. And sometimes you're in a bad place and all you need is a promise. Come on. God, God. Now, all I need is a promise. Somebody give me a promise. Somebody give me a promise. Somebody give me a promise. As soon as you get that promise, you wake up. You're like, wow. Okay, the promise is coming. It's coming. The problem is you got to make sure that you're looking for God to put it and not the person. I'm not going to tell you I'm resurrect right now because you've been putting all your promises in people, baby. People can't give you nothing. Without God, we can do nothing. Ain't nothing. Anybody. Ain't nothing. No man, no woman. Nobody can do for you. The only person that can do for you is God. And you never know who God going to use the sin to put the stuff in your hand that you've been looking for. You just got to believe in God, not in people. You want to resurrect? I'm telling you today that there's some, that little voice that I talked about earlier is in all of us. Yes, sir. Amen. And you've been letting the enemy keep you down. Some of you older, you keep hearing that voice there, and you'll say to people, I know I need to go back to school. I know I need to, well, go. No, no, please. Stop talking about it. Yes, sir. It's not a pipe dream. You wouldn't have that thought in your head unless God, you think the devil wants you to go back to school? No. <laughs> I, need, I know I need to start that business. I got an idea for a bit. I know I need to work harder at this and I, I need to get this together. I need to put some order in my, I know what I need to do. That's resurrection talking to you. Resurrection will always tell you not, not to be satisfied where you are. Anybody hear resurrection voices in your life? Anybody hear resurrection voices? Anybody hear resurrection voices? Are you hearing something saying, hey, don't you be satisfied? Don't you sit here? Don't you act like this is it, baby? There's so much more I got to give you. There's so much more you got to come in to me. You can't stay here. But as my wife said, we don't always, we don't always like to go through the pain that comes with it. As Stephen said this morning, discipline. Once you accept what God is offering you, you got to discipline yourself to get it. And that's painful. Is it this painful? Yes, it is. Look at me, y'all. I came down. It's been two years. It's been two years. It's been two years. And I'm still going. It takes discipline. It's painful. I wake up, don't want to do it. But I understand if I want to get to the other side, I got to do it. I got to hurt myself. I got to push myself beyond myself. I'm telling you today, if you're going to live in your resurrection, you got to push yourself beyond yourself. Let me tell you something. The people who love you the most are people that push you beyond yourself. If you don't have nobody to push you beyond yourself, they probably don't care nothing about you. Jesus. The people who love you will push you beyond yourself. Yeah, it's supposed to hurt. But you ought to learn how to love those people and stop falling in love with people. They don't do nothing for you. But just make you feel good all the time. Wow. Uh, mm. Amen. 
Yeah, it's all momentary. That's right. Listen, this is Resurrection Sunday. If you've been hearing that voice, I want to pray. We're going to have communion, and we're going to do communion a little different today. For those of you that are here for the first time, we got something new. Yes, <laughs> We're going to try to do it like the Bible says a little bit. So we got some meat with our communion today. Amen. Yeah, some meat. <laughs> <laughs> but with that understanding, as we, in fact, yeah, I think I'll incorporate that in the message. Bring it on. I'll, I'll bring the communion on. I'll incorporate it in the message. Are you with me? Um, while they're bringing it, I want you to understand something. We've always done communion in the past because it represents the death, the resurrection of Jesus. And that's what it's supposed to represent. But I want to read the scripture. <coughs> In Luke. Luke, the 22nd chapter. And this is part of the resurrection message. Are you there yet? Luke, the twenty second chapter, and we're going to begin reading at the fourteenth verse. And it says, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now, he says, with desire, I have desire. Anybody know what the desire is? Y'all really know? What, what do you think? Well, I just want you to get it in your head. What do you think about when you think about desire? You think about cherishing something. You think about something that is uh, that you want to love, that you want to. So it's desire brings a sort of excitement. The act of desiring brings excitement. So what Jesus is literally saying is that I'm excited about eating this with you. This is the Passover meal. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more, uh, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them, saying, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper. Likewise, the cup after supper. Likewise, the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But, beloved, the hand of him which you tread me is with me on the table. And truly, son of man, God has determined, but one to that man by whom he betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it should do this thing, that should do this thing. So, um, the whole idea is that after the supper is when he gave the drink. So we know if you're going to have a meal, you don't just have bread. You have meat with the bread in the custom. So what we have today is lamb meat along with the lettuce. The lettuce represents Everything that the, in the Jewish custom that they did represented their coming out of Egypt. 
It represented everything that went with that. So it represented the bondage. So sometimes they would eat something bitter to represent the bondage that they were in. Are you with me? That's where you get the green stuff from. It's supposed to be bitter. Amen. To represent the bondage. The lamb that was slain. Amen. To put the blood pulse on the door so that they could, the deaf angel would pass by them. Amen. And so we also have the bread, which represents the broken body. Amen. We have the, uh, the drink or the wine, which represents the blood. Amen. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So here's the thing. As we take this, he said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So God wants you to always remember what he brought you out of. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Let me just pause for a minute. God, God always wants you to remember what he brought you out of. The secret to your resurrection is remember what he brought you out of. Why am I pausing? Because some of you still don't remember. Some of you have been brought out of some death situations. He wants you to remember that. You've been counted out. You've been left for dead. He wants you to remember that. Some of you have been evicted, kicked out, homeless. He wants you to remember that. Some of you have been rejected. He wants you to remember that. I don't want to remember when I come out of because it, it hurts too bad. You better remember that you're out of it. Don't you watch the news? Don't you watch the news when people that are in your situation are dead and you're still here? Don't you watch the news? You don't think that's by the grace of God? He does this so you can remember what he brought you out of. And I pray to God that as you partake of this meal today, that you will remember what he brought you out of. We're standing. We're standing. We're standing. There's some power in that, y'all. There's some power to remember what he brought you out of. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Resurrection Sunday. I thank you that you came, you put on this earth suit, the flesh, and you conquered sin, hell, and the grave just for us. The sting of death has been taken from us because of your resurrection. And I thank you for it. Father, I thank you that you've given us a time to remember that you delivered us. We didn't deliver ourselves. It wasn't our education. It wasn't our information. It was only by your grace and mercy that while we were sinners, you died for us. Now, Father, as we partake today, wake us up again. Revive us again. Refresh us again. That we may live for you. That we may live for you. That every single day of our life will be focused on living for you. In the name of Jesus. And Father, for this we will give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As we come up today, um, please get your hands clenched back there. Well, she'll, Sister Janet, she'll be standing back there a little bit. Again, I'm so forgetful. I'm trying to get up here. Uh -huh. Amen. And then back that way, it's fine. Yes. No, I just washed my hands. Amen. Adults, please.
get your children for them. The little ones, so they don't be touching RJ tape. Amen, because some folks are hot at night. Yeah, so please. <laughs> the smaller children, please get that for them. Amen. Great job. <clears throat> Amen. So, at the direction of the usher, once you come, and uh, amen, and receive. Uh, uh, yeah, brothers. As the ministers and leaders, please go last. Okay. So.
Said as often as you eat this bread or this meal, you drink this cup, you do it in remembrance of me. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So when you drink this, it represents Jesus said blood and it represents your cleansing for today. When you walk out of here today, you will be whole, you will be complete. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And cleansed from all your sin. And he said, as far as the east is from the west, I will remember your sins no more. Drink you all of it and do likewise. Now we're going to do something a little different today, and I'm going to remember this. In Jewish custom, they do things, I taught this a long time ago, in what they call a circular mass. And what that means is that whatever they start with, that's what they end with. So the Bible says, and they sang a hymn and went out. But we started with a song that said, we need an outpour of your spirit. Amen. And I want to say that as we lead today, because now that you've been made whole and complete, you need to ask God's spirit to fill you up again. You need God's spirit to saturate you again. So the song says, we need for of your spirit. We